I want to tell you a story that um, is a favorite story to tell, uh, both as a lesson when I'm teaching young people about uh, how to uh, build a story arc uh, using uh, the principles of mythology, the principles of myth, really. Uh, myth, myth, the myths are the stories. Mythology. The story is called Mary Colhane and the Dead Man. And it's an old Irish folk tale with many mythic characteristics. Now, it was a hard time in Ireland. The famine, uh, people were dying. And the English, the English occupied the land and took, took over most of the good farmland and most of the potato crop. Now, Mary Colhane, she lived with 11 brothers and sisters. It was a big family. But of all the children, Mary was the one that loved to take walks with her father. Now, he was an old man, and he had rheumatism. We would call it arthritis, I suppose. And sometimes when he went walking, his knees would, would throb and, and ache. So he always carried his blackthorn walking stick. It was a, a cane, a walking stick made out of the root of a blackthorn tree. Well, one day, Mary and her father were walking and the mist began to roll in from the sea, and it got cold and damp, as it often does in Ireland. Well, his knees began to throb and ache. Ah, Mary, he said, uh, I need to stop and rest. My old bones are, are tired and sore. So it happened that they stopped to rest by a graveyard. Uh, they said some prayers over the graves of relatives. And after a while, the sun came out. The sun broke through the fog, kind of burned off that fog, and, and her father said, oh, Mary, that warm sun feels good in my old bones. I'm ready to go home now. And he was. In fact, he walked with a little bit of a spring in his step. And maybe perhaps that's why he made a mistake. Often in these stories, there's a mistake, there's a wound, there's something that goes wrong that opens up the lives of the people in the story. But you see, because he walked home without a limp, he forgot his blackthorn walking stick. That night, as they were sitting around the hearth, the fireplace, now, that was Mary's favorite time of the day. Her whole family would gather around the warm fireplace, and they'd sing songs and tell stories. But on this particular night, Mary could see that her father was troubled by something. He was frowning and his brow was furrowed. She could see his face clearly by the light of the fire. Father, what's the matter, she asked him. Ah, Mary. Mary, I left my blackthorn walking stick. I left it alongside of that new dug grave. It's such a fine walking stick. I'm afraid someone might steal it. I wish one of you children would go to the cemetery and fetch it for your father. Well, the thought of going out in the dark, in the night, to the graveyard, made all the children stare into the fire, afraid to look their own father in the eye, except for Mary. I'll get it, Father. And she jumped up and she ran out of the house before anybody could stop her. She was the youngest. And she ran into the night. And she couldn't see it first. Couldn't see the hand in front of her face that was so dark. But she could feel under her feet the path was smooth. So she thought, ah, this must be the way. This must be the way to the graveyard. For you see, in those days, with the famine and the diseases and the brutal occupation of the English soldiers, the paths to the graveyards were worn smooth by the feet of people going to bury their loved ones. And Mary could feel that under her feet. And she could feel that she was going down, down into a ravine, perhaps, the air cooler and cooler on her face as she descended down into that low place. And then it was harder walking, more difficult. And she thought, I must be coming now up a hill out of this ravine. And sure enough, she was. And Mary saw ahead of her an iron fence. That was the fence that surrounded the graveyard. And there it was, backlit in the moonlight. 
So she walked toward that fence. When she got to it, she walked along. It kept, kept her hand kind of along that fence until she got to the gate. And she opened the gate and she walked inside. And once inside, she could see a little more clearly. The moon had risen a bit. She saw the gravestones, some of them just piles of field stone for the poor. Uh, most of them had wooden crosses. A few of the lords and ladies of the English had proper granite stones. And there Mary saw something that made the hair on the back of her neck stand up. She saw a pile of dirt pile of dirt. She had not seen a pile of loose dirt, and it was right next to an open grave. Now, she had not seen that that afternoon, but that was the place where her father and she had stopped to rest because there in that pile of soft, fresh, mounded earth was her father's blackthorn walking stick. She could tell it was his because she could see the moonlight shining on the handle that he had worn smooth, you know, in the palm of his hand carrying it all those years. So she went for it and she grabbed onto it. And when she did, when her hand clasped onto that blackthorn walking stick, she heard a sound, a voice. Leave the blackthorn alone, Mary Cohane, and help me out of this place. And the voice was coming from the open grave. And the voice seemed to draw Mary toward it. And she found herself at the edge of that grave and she looked down and she saw the white bony hand of a corpse reaching up to her. And she was amazed to see her own hand almost by its own power, by its own volition, reach down and grab onto that cold bony corpse's hand. And she pulled him out of the grave. He wrapped his long arm around her shoulder and with the other hand pointed to the village. And Mary found herself half dragging, half carrying the corpse across the graveyard, through the gate, and out toward the road, almost as if she were in a dream, almost as if she were in a trance, almost as if she were floating above that graveyard, watching herself dragging the corpse through the gate and out onto the road. Well, it wasn't long when she got tired, you know, and she stopped to rest for a moment just to catch her breath. And when she did, the corpse hand pointed again, walk on, Mary Colhane. And Mary walked on. Now, they hadn't gone far when they came to three houses out in the country, not, not in town, three houses out away from the village. And he pointed to the door of that first house. So Mary dragged him up the path onto kind of a, a wooden stoop and she grabbed onto an iron ring, a rusty iron ring uh, to open the door. She began opening that, that old plank door. <coughs> Wait, Mary, we cannot go into this house. I smell the smell of holy water. Now, this was the part of Ireland where many of the people would go to the Catholic church on Good Saturday before Easter Sunday, and they would have holy water blessed by the priest. And they would put that holy water by their door for protection. We used to do that at, in our house when I was a young boy. So Mary turned him around, went down the path, and walked along to the next house. He pointed again to that door. Mary pulled him up, dragged him along, up the path, onto the stoop. This time it was an old hemp rope. And Mary began pulling onto that, that rope. <laughs> Mary, we cannot go here. I smell the smell of holy water. And they left. And they went to the third house. And when Mary got to the third house and began opening that door, he said, ah, we can go into this house, Mary. There's no holy water in this house. And in they went. In those days, in that village, the doors were never locked. They came to a a room, it was quite a large house. They came to a room with a round table, an oak table with, with chairs around it. And he sat heavily down into one of the chairs. Mary could felt, tell that he looked tired and weak. Mary, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. Bring me food, Mary. Bring me water. 
when Mary walked into the kitchen, she couldn't find any food or water. Now, there was a, a tin kettle of soapy, dirty water, but nothing to drink and no food at all. But then Mary noticed that there was a small door off of the kitchen. And she walked and she opened that door and it was a pantry, a long, narrow uh, a room with shelves on each side for food and dishes and cups and clay pots. And Mary found on one of the shelves 